Hey everybody, Derek Pascarella here, otherwise known as A-Team, and uh, we're going to be taking a look today at a really cool little utility um, by a gentleman named RazorX, a buddy of mine on the interwebs, uh, always willing to help out in the Dreamcast community, especially when it comes to uh, the GDMU and really all things relating to it. A uh, very friendly guy, and uh, now that his tool here, which is GD Menu Theme Manager, has matured to version 1.3, and it's very feature-rich and working great, I figured, you know what? It's about time to put together a little bit of a, I don't want to call it review video, because, I mean, it's, uh, you know, objectively awesome, but more of a tutorial, or really just a, a how-to, and to give those who are unfamiliar with the concept of theming, uh, GD menu, give them an idea of you know what that all looks like. So for those of you who are GDMU users and uh, also using GD menu, which I hope to God you are, and you're not pressing that little cycle disk image button on the PCB, um, you are very familiar with this. I don't want to say ugly, but I think we all know it definitely leaves something to be desired. Default theme here or skin. Now, uh, thanks to some work by a few others in the scene, it was figured out that uh, you could build a custom first read dot bin. In other words, the binary that is launched right away when the menu software loads um, that uses uh, different uh, background images, color palettes, things of that nature. And if we open up his tool here, the download link for which will be in the video description, we can see that very same default theme here. And on the right, we can actually see a whole host of other themes, quite a few that were put together by RazorX himself as I cycle through them here. Pretty cool Fantasy Star Online one. And moving along, here's a really cool one by Riggles. This was actually the first custom theme I ever used. And after that, I decided I really need to put some work in uh, to put something together that really kind of uh, suited my needs. And uh, scrolling on down through the list here, we will actually get to my two themes, which are right here at the bottom. I like to call them a uh, clean cast, little play on words there. I've got the blue swirl European version and the red slash orange slash not trying to start a flame war over logo colors. Uh, red Swirl version <laughs> down below. And uh, the usage of the software is simple, right? We select our theme on the right. So today I will select uh, my theme right here. First thing we want to do is click on Import Theme. Now that it's imported, we have options to import a custom font. Uh, to be honest with you, this is a feature that I only briefly experimented with when I first started playing around with this tool. Um, to my knowledge, it's not widely used. Maybe we can include some more info on this in the future, but for now, we'll keep it moving. Uh, the image compression here, this is useful for uh, taking the uh, theme PNG that's created and uh, reducing it to a size uh, which is somewhere around, I want to say, 25 to 30 kilobytes. I think 30 kilobytes is the maximum, putting it uh, into that sweet spot there. He's actually using a uh, free API to do that. It'll actually let you know the number of uh, free image compressions left for the month. Um, but this theme was already created uh, to fit the parameters of that file size limit. So after we've clicked on import, we then want to click on save. So this will actually save a binary of the theme unscrambled. We go ahead and save this. We can see that actually the new theme.bin file appeared just behind us. Once we click on Advanced, this is where we can do some really cool stuff. So we have our font colors. We have also settings for games per page and also the game list position. So you may be wondering why you would want to reduce or increase the number of games per page or adjust the game list position. Well, you can see if we look at this uh, you know, theme image here, we may you know, want to completely modify the way that uh, this layout is you know, put together. Let's say, for example, we want to cut the number of games per page in half. Let's say we want to uh, move its position someplace else. And then let's say in the future, there could be options to increase the uh, disk art PVR preview, perhaps uh, 
make it front and center or mimic some sort of um, cover flow scenario, right? So these are all kind of work in progress features that definitely will, uh, you know, mature as time goes by. But what's really cool here, and most useful right now, are the font colors. So if we open this up, we're presented with uh, a whole host of RGB values. Um, now, credit goes to Megavolt 85, everybody's favorite Atomus Wave, uh, let's call it ROM converter, <laughs> or rather uh, game porter, uh, over from the Dreamcast Talk forums. It was discovered by uh, him that we could actually do this to begin with. Prior to this, there was uh, it was thought to be extremely limited uh, the sort of customization we could do with the uh, fonts within the menu itself. But we can see from the presets, we've got a number of uh, options available from the dropdown. So the default one represents the default color palette. GD menu ships with out of the box. Um, there's also a sort of generic blue one that Razor X put together. Generic red one. This is the one for CleanCast that represents um, what I think goes best with uh, my particular theme that I put together. Um, so you can make these modifications here, and upon each adjustment, we are going to want to click Save. So I'm not going to make any changes here, but you could see that if I were to make an adjustment to the color, I've got this dark gray now. I could click on Save, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put it back to white, click Save, and it's actually modified the um, new theme.bin on the fly. And now that we've got that, um, we can then close this window. But before closing it, I want to let you know that all of these presets we see here, if we return uh, to the file explorer behind me inside of assets, we actually see them represented as text files. So if we open up this cleancast one, for example, bring it up here, we can actually see that all of those RGB values are all listed here. So you can actually create these text files, drop them in this folder, and they will appear in the drop-down just like you see here. So let me close this. All right, now that we have that saved, close that. Uh, that's pretty much everything under the advanced category that we want to work with today. Our last uh, terminal step here is the scrambling of the binary. So we click on Scramble. It's going to handle that in the background instantly. And you may have noticed a first read.bin file appear, then disappear. This is actually the uh, binary that's going to be used to build the menu CDI with Madsheep's SD card maker tool. And if we look in our folder, we actually have a copy there. And uh, the area where that is written, if we go to the root of uh, the SD card maker tool into data and into files, this first read.bin is actually the one that was written just a minute ago, and that actually contains the custom menu with the custom font colors. So in order to actually uh, build a menu, right, to make use of this, what we are going to do is head back to the root and then actually go ahead and launch the SD card maker tool. Now I've got a... 64 gigabyte SD card inserted here, just a test one that I use for experimenting, making sure disk images are good, things of that nature. And, you know, let's say, for example, this is your existing SD card. It's already got all of the games that you've painstakingly curated over the long, arduous years that you've been a Dreamcast ODE fanatic and you know, you'd know you like to rebuild the card or rebuild the menu on the card using the new theme. Well, that's easy. Recall that we have our new uh, firstread.bin in here. So all we need to do is remove our first entry. Now, important to note here is that if this disk art PVR is present at the time that you go to build the card, it will actually give GD Menu uh, generic disk art. Looks like this, actually. Why don't we show a little preview? Let's open up WinPVR. Looks like this. Simple, but it's not nothing, right? So if you prefer to actually use uh, nothing at all, so that the um, default disk art, like you see here, is present, 
then what you're going to want to do is actually just delete this file. But for today's example, we're going to leave it alone. Again, coming back here, right, this represents an SD card that you've already got. Uh, we've established that. So what do we want to do, right? We want to actually remove this first entry. You might be thinking, but I can't do that. No, no, yes, you can, because it's actually going to rebuild the image for you. We are going to click Save. It's going to ask us if we want to customize our menu. This is very important. If we do not say yes, we cannot guarantee it will successfully rebuild the menu CDI. So we'll say yes. We can see that GD menu is actually returned to the top of the list. We can leave everything alone. Click done. It will then, just as quick as you saw there, rebuild the CDI and complete. All right, fantastic. Other important thing to note here is that if you've already got uh, SD card maker installed somewhere else, or let's say you want to share the theme with others, all you really need to do is after uh, making use of Razor X's tool is actually take this first read.bin file that is scrambled and saved here and uh, share that. That's the portable version that can be used in any SD card maker installation and can be shared around with uh, anybody online. All right, now that we've done that, let's eject our SD card, boot it up on actual hardware, and see how it looks. All right, moving over to the Dreamcast. I have got my custom theme booted up here, and rather than use that really simple SD card, that 64 gigabyte tester, uh, with just a couple images, I decided to boot up my regular, uh, let's call it daily driver, so we can see something with a little more, uh, you know, a little more content. But as you can tell, we have got uh, white text for the disk image information over at the top right, which was previously that totally hideous aquamarine turquoise color <laughs> over on the menu. Uh, over here, we can actually see the same white text and also the highlighted image actually contains uh, a font color that more closely resembles, or actually based on the RGB color values, exactly resembles <laughs> the blue found elsewhere in this theme. Now we can also see that if we scroll through the menu options, the same is true. The uh, title bar text is white, just like I specified in Razor X's tool. If I look in options, all of those colors were customizable and they were all honored here. And the same is true for all of the other areas. System information and our about. The very last thing I wanted to cover now that we've seen the usage of the actual application itself, what it looks like booting on real hardware, um, is to see, you know, what it looks like to actually create these themes for yourself. Because hopefully, uh, with videos like this, uh, you know, it will gain in popularity. And really all we're looking for is breathing as much new life into our beloved Dreamcast as possible, right? <laughs> so um, I've actually got the uh, GIMP opened up here behind me. Um, of course, if you want to be a little fancier, you can go for something like Photoshop or really, you know, any sort of photo editing tool of your choice. And if we're looking back in the GD Menu Theme Manager directory, we can see a folder called Themes. And in here is actually all of the individual themes that we were uh, cycling through and looking through in the UI earlier in this video. So, for example, if I take uh, this one here, open it up we can actually see the image itself in all of its glory. Zoom in a little bit here, and we could see that uh, we can make any sort of changes to this theme PNG, save it, throw it in our uh, directory here, give it a name, open up Razor X's GD Menu Theme Manager tool, and voila, we're off to the races. Now, it's probably self-explanatory from just looking at this, but... Um, you know, it uh, takes the default disk image art from this corner here, and we'll display it here if uh, no PVR is detected. This loading text I didn't even bother changing because um, anybody who's actually using, you know, 
proper methods to populate their SD card is never going to see this anyway. And then of course the menu text and everything is dynamically generated and displayed here. But that is about it. It's that easy to operate the utility and it's that easy to create new themes. So I hope this video was informative, helpful, and I hope it sheds some light on uh, the really awesome efforts of guys like RazorX who are you know, helping to keep this community alive. That's it, everybody. Thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Derek signing off. Keep dreaming.